good work. I, uh, I understand that Baruch Hashem, you've been having a wonderful Shabbos. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of work goes into organizing a Shabbos like this. I, uh, I was not here, I was in my Mokim Ashlichus in five towns. Baruch Hashem. Yeah, was there some applause for five towns? Was there? Was there? Was there? Okay. All right. Anyone from Cedarhurst? Yeah? Right here? Okay. A landsman. <laughs> I'm not really, I'm not from Cedarhurst. I was sent. I was sent to Cedarhurst. You know, most shluchim get sent out of New York. I got sent to New York. And uh, also most shluchim get sent away from communities where they have a infrastructure of Torah. And Baruch uh, Hashem, my shlichus and my makam shlichus is to the Oilma Torah, learning chsidis with with the Frum world, which is a deeply, deeply gratifying shlichus. And uh, when I heard that this Shabbaton was happening, I said, this is right up my alley. This is a beautiful thing because the interest and the curiosity and the excitement coming from the Torah world in Siddhis Chabad today, I think is more than at any point ever, ever in history, and it's only growing. And this, this Shabbaton is a Wonderful uh, case in point, evidence of that fact. Okay, more applause. All right, yeah. Okay. All right. So, Motzei uh, Shabbos, there's a there's a chesidish minig to tell a Balshamtov story, Motzei Shabbos. And it's a segula, they say, for Parnosa. Although the Helek Yeruzhener Tzadik, Rabbi Yisrael Ruzhener, said three lav davkas. Lav davka, Motzei Shabbos, but rather any time. Lav davka about the Baal Shem Tov, really about any Tzadik. Lav davka, segula for Parnosa, it could be a segula for whatever you want, a blank check. <laughs> so uh, I'll tell you a story. There was a chassid, a well-known chassid of Balmesiris Nefesh in Russia named Reb Mendel Futtafas. And he was coming to the Rebbe, this is after he got out of Russia, and he was living in Eretz Yisrael, in Kfar Chabad, and he was coming to New York for Tishrei, to spend Tishrei with the Rebbe. And on the plane, he was seated next to a young man who, uh, for all appearances, was not religious in any way, shape, or form. And this young man started to strike up a conversation with, with Reb Mendel. And he, he noticed he had like a broken Hebrew, sort of, and uh, with a French accent. He explained that he was, he was from Paris, he was from France, and he was studying in the university in Paris. And he had been to, uh, to Israel, and now he was going to New York, and he was asking Reb Mendel all types of philosophical questions, or he was attempting in the, in the shared language that they had. So uh, Reb Mendel <laughs> told this young man, I don't know the answers that you're, for the, to the questions you're asking, but you're going to New York. Go to Brooklyn, go to Crown Heights, go to 770 Eastern Parkway. And uh, I think you'll get your questions answered over there. So Reb Mendel didn't see this young man after the flight. He went to Crown Heights and he spent Tishrei. Everyone knows, I'm sure everyone's heard what Tishrei by the Rebbe 
meant the, the elation, the, the, the absolute otherworldly quality of it, the heavenly quality of it. And uh, after Tishrei, you come, you land, <laughs> you come back down to earth, back to business. And uh, so Reb Mendel went to go fundraising. He used to fundraise. He'd come to America to fundraise for the yeshivas. So he was traveling around, and he went out to California with his, uh, his partner, his fundraising partner, uh, Rabbi Reichik, Rabbi Shmuel David Reichik. And they, they traveled around. They had their, uh, their circuit. They would go around the, the western states, and they would fundraise. And they did this for a few months, and then Kislev, Reb Mendel would come back to New York, talking now Tishrei Cheshvin Kislev, so three months later. He came back to New York to spend one more Shabbos with the Rebbe, and then from there he would fly back to Eretz Yisrael. So these were in the days of Yechidus, one-on-one -on -one audiences with the Rebbe. And Reb Mendel schedules his Yechidus. And uh, everyone saw the Rebbe's room? Was that part of the, the Shabbos or Erev Shabbos? You're familiar with... There's an area called Gan Eden There's Gan Eden Elyon and there's Gan Eden Tachtain. <laughs> so when Siddim would wait for Yechidus, so when it was close to their turn, They'd be sitting in an area called Ganid Natachte. And Reb Mendel looks, and who's he sitting next to? This French college kid. <laughs> <He's sitting, laughs> he was sitting next to him on a plane three months ago, and now he's sitting next to him. So he says, what are you doing here? He says, you told me I have these deep questions about life. So uh, you said, the, the address, 770 Eastern Parkway. So I made it. I'm here. So Reb Mendel was taken aback. <clears throat> he sees this young man go into Yechidus. And the duration of Yechidus could vary. Could vary from a few minutes to much longer. In this particular case, Yechidus was going on for quite some time. And when Yechidus would go on for that long amount of time, there was a, a mazkir, a secretary of the Rebbe, whose job it was to check that everything was okay. Rav uh, Label Groner. So Rabbi Groner opened the door to check, to see what's going on. Why is this yechidus with this college kid taking so long? And <laughs> Rav Mendel got curious. He wanted to see, you know, What's, what are they talking about after all? He, he sat next to this kid. He was asking philosophical questions about, about freedom of choice and about predestination. And, you know, philosophical stuff like a college kid likes to talk about. So Reb Mendel's curious. What's going on in there? It's going on a long time. This, this kid is sitting with the Rebbe. So as Rabbi Groner opens the door to peek in and make sure everything's okay, Reb Mendel <laughs> cranes his, his neck around the... The, the opening of the door, and he peeks in. And he says, in telling the story, I looked in, and I saw for a half a second, the greatest giloy, the greatest revelation of the Rebbe that I've seen in my life. He said, what did I see? I looked in, and I saw the Rebbe is seated at his desk with a Tanya open in front of him. And across from him, facing him, this college kid is seated, seated at the other side of the desk with a Tanya open in front of him. And they're facing each other like chavrusas. And then... The Rebbe nodded to Rabbi Groner, everything's okay, Rabbi Groner closed the door, that's it. He said, Rabbi Mendel said, I saw it for a half a second. He said, I want to tell you something. I saw the Rebbe by Napoleon's march. You know, that was the climax of Yom Kippur. A 
at the end of Neila, <laughs> after the victorious Schoeffer blast has sounded, and there's the, the, the elation, right? The, the Napoleon's march, the, the song of, of, of victory, and the Rebbe would dance and stand on his chair. This was a gilui, this was a great revelation. The mental said, I saw the Rebbe at Hakofas. Hakofas, the Rebbe's simcha in simchas Torah, the, the, the pure joy, the bliss of rejoicing with the Torah. Hakofas by the Rebbe. He said, I saw the Rebbe at all the times where the Rebbe was revealed in the most spectacular way. But I never saw such a revelation of the Rebbe as for that half a second, seeing how the Rebbe sits at his desk with a Tanya open in front of him, facing a college kid, learning Chsidis Bechavrusa. So that's a story. I know that a lot of my, uh, I'll say colleagues or friends, are curious, what are you guys doing here? <laughs> why, why did Washington Heights come to Crown Heights? What are, you, what are you looking for? You have nothing better to do. And I even know people who, who wonder, you know, if it was the good old days, and everyone who's been to Crown Heights understands what I mean by the good old days. And you understand what we mean when we say before Gimel Tamas and after Gimel Tamas and why we describe it that way. But what brings young men who have <laughs> a bu busy lives and they have plenty to do and they have plenty to learn and there's no lack of shiurim, there's no lack of of, of Jewish activity, where they're coming from, what, what, what's drawing them? I understand if it were the good old days, if the Rebbe were giving out Keisho Bracha, if, the, if there were dollars, if there were Afabrengen. And everyone here knows that if this were the good old days, I promise you, there would have been some acknowledgement in the Fabrengen of this group. Whether explicitly, or you had to read between the lines, but there would have certainly been an acknowledgement of, of such a group in the presence of the Rebbe's Fabrengen. But this is not uh, then, this is now. What's drawing people here more than ever, as I mentioned, more than ever? So I'll tell you something. And this is something that's so hard to convey. This is the biggest misconception about Chabad. And not the misconception held by our enemies, but the misconception held by our friends. The misconception popularly often held by our friends is that Chabad is a wonderful social services organization, a Kirov outreach organization. They're there for you a humanitarian aid organization. So whether it's a, a from a yid who needs cholent with kugel and kishke and Shabbos in Thailand, or it's somebody who's just experienced a natural disaster, a tornado, a flood, Chabad has enough office Israel to be there to take care of you. Humanitarian, social services. And that's all true. But that's just a tight saw. That's just a symptom. That's a simon, not a goyrim, like we say in learning. That's the outer expression of something. The fact that a, that, that, that a Chabad chassid will run to go put on tefillin with a stranger or to bring challah to, to, a, to a tourist, to a guest who does, to staying in a hotel room that's not the essence. That's the expression of the essence. The essence is there's something called Torah Sachsidis. There's something called Tanya, and there's a periglamid base of Tanya, which is the lave, the heart of Tanya, which is all about Avas Yisro. Siddis Chabad 
is Chochma Bina Das. Kishmai Kenhu, that's what it is. It's holy information. And when you learn this information and you digest this truth, one of the things it makes you do is be Meshuggah for Havas Yisrael. But then you get misdiagnosed as a social services organization or humanita humanitarian aid or Kirov or outreach when that's the tight saw of a worldview that's deeper than deeper than deep. Why people come to Crown Heights and why people come to Chabad, it's not for the chola, it's not for the kugel, it's not for a good time. You know why they come? To learn the truth. To have their deepest philosophical questions answered. To encounter the Rebbe's worldview. Meaning, purpose, why we're here, what's life all about. The panemius, like that French college kid, sitting learning Tanya Bechavrusa with the Rebbe in his room. You know, the Friedrich Rebbe says about the Magid, the Magid was the successor of the Baal Shem Tov. The Baal Shem Tov had 60 shishim, students. The Magid was the, the ultimate student and became his Mamala Mokim, his successor. The Friedrich Rebbe says something very interesting about the relationship between the Baal Shem Tov and the Magid and how the Magid became a Chosid. Nisht durch Mofsim umakifim not through miracles or transcendental acts that cannot be explained or understood did the Baal Shem Tov take, acquire, bring to him the Magid. You understand? Not that the Baal Shem Tov was able to be a miracle worker and he's able to blow away the Magid and the Magid said, whoa, this is crazy. I can't, can't explain this, can't understand this. This is pyrotechnics, absolute spectacular, wonderful, parting the Red Sea. This is better than, uh, this is better than uh, Universal City Studio Tours. Blown away. No, nor, but rather, as der Magid hat gesucht, etzim ne kudas pnimias ha chochma. That's a mouthful. The Magid was searching for the essence of the point of the inner meaning of wisdom meaning the core truth, the deepest truth. The Magid was looking for the deepest, deepest, deepest truth. His whole life he just wanted somebody to tell him the reality. And as er hot des gefunden beim Baal Shem Tov, when he found that by the Baal Shem Tov, is er geworn seiner. He became his. People are looking for truth. People are looking for the etzim the kudas pinimias achachma, the inner core. It's not enough. And 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 <laughs> it's the younger it's the younger people who are insistent upon this. It's not enough that I learn Torah for the kedusha of it. So for kedusha, I learn Gemara. Bavli, Rushalmi, a Rambam with a Kesef Mishnah. That's for Kedusha. And then for Etzim Pinimis, no Kudzus HaChochma, if I want real practical wisdom that's relevant, I'll go on YouTube, I'll watch a Jordan Peterson video, they'll find out what life's about. The youth will not stand for that. We're looking for the truth. And if I can find it, 
if I can find it anywhere, then I'm going to go there. And today, every single one of you can be that college kid sitting learning Chassidus B'chavrosa with the Rebbe. Because the Rebbe gave us Lakuti Sichas. The Rebbe gave us Maimarim. The Rebbe gave us the Igris. The Igris, the Igris is, a, is a Limud. It's worthy of, of study. Everything the Rebbe wrote, the Rebbe is revealing to you the essence of truth, what life's about, why we're here, what it's all about. We're not here for a show, we're not here for a good time, we're not here for excitement, there's plenty of that in the world today. We're here for the inner core of truth that we find in Torah's Chabad, in the Rebbe's message to our daughter. And it's personal. I'll tell you one last story. And it's a story that many of you probably already know. About the Balatanya in prison. There was a non-Jewish official, government official, who was very interested in the Alter Rebbe and used to come around and ask the Alter Rebbe questions. And at one point, this non-Jewish official asked the Alter Rebbe, what's pshat that after the sin of the tree of knowledge, God comes and he says to Adam, where are you? God isn't omniscient. He has to ask, where are you? And the Alter Rebbe says, he didn't want to scare him. And the non-Jew said to the Alter Rebbe, that's what Rashi says. <laughs> I want to know what you say. So clearly, this fellow, whoever he was, he knew his stuff. He says, that, that's what Rashi says. He didn't want to scare him. He wanted to open up the conversation, break the ice, like we say. He says, but I want to know what you say. So before the Alter Rebbe answered, the Alter Rebbe says to this non-Jew, do you believe that everything in Torah is relevant to every person in every time and in every place. And this non-Jew says, yes, I do believe that. And the Alter Rebbe was very relieved because he knew at this point already that the entire imprisonment and interrogation was not because of what was going on down here in the terrestrial realm, but it was actually a manifestation on a lower level of a heavenly case in the heavenly court, a kitrug in the Bezdin Shalmaila, that he was being accused of proliferating Tadis of Hashem too much. So he understood that the real case was whether or not the teachings of the Baal Shem Tov should be spread out in the world. So he was relieved when he asked this non-Jewish government official, do you believe that Torah is applicable to every person, every place, at every time? And the person said, yes, I do believe that. He was relieved because that is one of the core teachings of the Baal Shem Tov. One of the core principles of Torah's Baal Shem Tov is that everything in Torah is relevant to every person at every time and every place. So the, 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 the Balatani was very relieved from that. So then he tells the, this non-Jew who asked him the question, he says, well, I'll tell you what it means. He says, you know, a person lives such and such many years. And he named a number. And it was the exact number of years of this person asking the question. It was his exact age. And God comes to him and says to him, Ayaka, where are you? Vahaltman, where are you? <laughs> what are you up to at this point? You live this many, this many years, months, days, hours, seconds, that were allotted to you to accomplish your life's mission. How's it going? <laughs> Let's check the progress bar. How, how, how far along are you? And that was the answer. Like I said, a well-known story story we often tell on Yud Tes Kislev on the, the Chag Egoula, the redemption when the Alter Rebbe got out of prison. But I just want to emphasize one detail there that I don't think always gets the right amount of emphasis. 
To me, <laughs> to me, what's the takeaway of the story? That everything in Torah is personal. And that the Alter Rebbe sat in prison and suffered in order to be victorious in bringing about a breakthrough in the world where it was acceptable to believe that every detail in Torah is speaking about me, right now, right here. You know, there was a guy who was in a hot air balloon and he got blown off course, he got lost. So he couldn't figure out how to get back to the base. So he lowered the hot air balloon a little bit, about 100 meters off the ground, so he could start to look for people. He sees a guy standing in front of a house. He screams down to him, hello down there, do you see me? The guy looks up, oh, wait, what's that? He says, help me, I'm lost. He says, okay, how do I help you? So the guy in the hot air balloon says, where am I? So the guy on the ground says, you're in a hot air balloon. Yeah, Shakoya, right. He says, yeah, I know, I know, I'm in a hot air balloon. What's my location? Where am I? Like in relation to, to, to the ground. So the guy says, you're about 100 meters up. <laughs> Shakoya, again, I know, I'm, I know I'm 100 meters up. Like, can you describe for me my location, where I'm located right now? He's like, oh, that, yeah. You're right over my house. He sees it's like not going anywhere. So the guy in the hot air balloon says, can I ask you something, sir? He says, yeah, go ahead. Are you a rabbi? The guy on the ground's like, yeah, yeah, I am a rabbi. How do you know I'm a rabbi? So the guy up in the hot air balloon says, because from the moment I met you, everything you've told me has been 100% true and totally irrelevant to my situation. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that gets the biggest applause. So this is what I want to tell you. We're not tolerant anymore today. Especially the young people are not tolerant anymore today. Of truth that demands to be listened to just because it's the truth but without being taught and shown how it's relevant. We don't want to be satisfied simply learning Torah because we know it's true. Of course it's true. We want to see how it's true to each of us in this time, in this place, at this juncture in our lives, with this Nisayan that we're struggling with right now, with our personality, with our background, with our struggles, our challenges, our strengths, our talents, our calling in life. So you ask, what brings a group of young people to Crown Heights for Shabbos? What are they looking for and what do they find? My opinion, what are they looking for and what are they finding? Chassidus is a, is a word that can use a word like chassidus. It can mean a lot of things to a lot of people. But I'm going to translate it in plain English for 2022. We want truth that is relevant, that is personal, that speaks to us compassionately, respectfully, where we don't have to hide any part of ourselves where everything can be examined and understood and used in our mission, that's what we're looking for. And that is what I believe has drawn each one of you to this room tonight and to this Shabbos, in this place. You are looking for truth. You're looking for depth that is relevant and personally meaningful. You can applaud yourselves. Go ahead, applaud yourselves. You made a significant step by being here tonight. Don't stop. Don't stop looking for how Torah is speaking to you. 
Look in Tanya, look in Lakut Sikhis, look in the Rebbe's Maimorim, look in the Igris. Look wherever you find it, but don't stop looking. Okay, good luck again. Thank you.